Hi, hello! Welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here for today's uh, Roll20 Indie Showcase. We do this every Tuesday where we highlight a different indie game and bring on a new cast of folks to play it. And I'm so, so excited. Today we are doing Companion's Tale with this very awesome crew. Really quickly before we go around, uh, I want to say a quick thank you, of course, to Roll20. We will be using Roll20 today, and this game is in the Roll20 marketplace. It is beautiful, it is gorgeous, and you should check it out. Uh, I also want to thank, of course, uh, my co-producer, B. Zelda, who runs every other week and is freaking awesome. Um, I think that was a partial swear, and I'm gonna... <laughs> Already? <laughs> Can you take that? No, it doesn't count. I didn't waste our one swear, I swear. <laughs> I don't you think swear. I did. <laughs> I swear I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I I also just want to remind everyone before we go around and say hi, hello to all these lovely folks that Roll20 is still fundraising for and uh, matching donations for Code 2040. Code 2040 um, is, of course, working to fight racial inequality in the tech sector, which is uh, very much still a, a huge problem and needs to be fixed. So they are matching uh, donations on that. So that is something I we always try and remind everyone. It's a really good uh, place to donate. If you have some spare bucks in your pocket, Roll20 is matching those donations. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for now. Today we are playing Companion's Tale, an absolutely amazing, immersive game that can that has so many cool variations available for you now in the Roll20 marketplace. Uh, you should check it out. Follow along with us today. Um, we are going to do the base game today, and I'm going to focus on facilitating for these cool, four cool people. We're going to be playing all the roles, all the roles that you see in this game. It is going to be heckin' awesome. Um, and I guess I should say, hi, my name is Jess. <laughs> I'm a professional streamer and producer. Um, <laughs> you can find me at go underscore JG at all the places. And uh, I'm very excited to be your your facilitator of this game today. Um, let's go around and say hi, hello to everyone. We have four amazing folks, including the actual game designer with us today. First up is Laura. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura Simpson. I'm the creator of Campaign Sale. I am very excited to be here today. Um, I really look forward to today's game. Heck yeah. Thank you so much for, for coming out and uh, for agreeing to be here and, and, and chat with us about your game because it's so good. I'm so excited. Thank you. Uh, next up is Ren. Oh, golly. Uh, hi, I'm Ren. I am... You can find me at Ren Apollo on Twitter. I I do mostly ridiculous interview shows, so but I'm make believe live in the chat, so I'll probably be spamming emotes at some point. Perfect. And next up is Dave. Hey there, I'm Data Dave. Uh you can find me at twitch.tv slash data dave. Catchphrases. Stay two day with Data Dave, because I stream every day. I would love to have you around and a voice act. Yeah. Heck yeah. Are you going to pull out some voices for us today? I'll try. I'll do my best <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> oh, let's do it. And last but most certainly not least, Vince. Hi, I'm Vince Gasso. I am an actor, best known for Felicia Day's The Guild. I am a DM of the D&D show Failed Save, and I stream on Twitch uh, five, six, sometimes seven days a week uh, at twitch.tv slash Vince Casso, which is also my handle on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm just excited to be here. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So before we go in uh, and I show you this lovely game uh, layout, underneath everyone, everyone's pictures today, you can see a role. And the fun thing is that while we are starting in those roles, everyone will get to play every role in this game. Um, so let's go over and I can show you. Da -da -da! Here we go. This is, this is our game. This is the beautiful uh, playmat that we uh, will be playing with today that you can play with yourself if you check out this game. Gorgeous. It's so, it's so lovely. And uh, it's actually also been broken down in the info here on the side, which you will be seeing. Um, it's been broken down into really accessible pieces, like bite-sized pieces of info. Um, this game is a game where like I said, everyone gets to do every role and everyone also gets to draw. So we're going to get to listen. You don't need you don't need to be some sort of pro artist to play this game. It That's is good. 
<laughs> I'm glad stick figures. I'm here for it. Listen, it's stick figures all day, every day. <laughs> It's, it's, it's going to be so good. So I'm going to do a quick read of uh, how to play this game. I'm going to share this on screen so all y'all watching at home can see it as well. So for this game, we are going to start with the prologue. Everyone has a prologue question that they will answer and we'll begin to draw on uh, our currently sadly blank canvas. Uh, we will fix that soon. Don't worry. Um, so this game is played in three acts. We are hoping to do at least one really good full act today. Um, you can play this game for, for shorter or longer periods of time, depending on how you want to do it. But basically each act starts with a historian phase. There are four story rounds. Uh, so as I said, everyone has kind of a, a role to begin with. But as we go through the rounds, the roles kind of go um down a player and everyone does every every role and we fi finish each act with a biographer phase um the historian phase that starts before the round begins the act um and then yeah as i said the biographer phase ends so one thing that we did do is we did kind of dole out the questions a little bit before so i'm gonna pull those up and ask laura to start us off laura would you would you do our first question, please? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so the first question is, what is the most prominent feature of our land and what virtue does it metaphorically represent? And what I would like to select as our, um, our most prominent feature is a uh, kind of a, a, a a really large tree like a there's a grove of forest but the in the center is this really majestic looking tree i am doing this with my mouse pad <laughs> so just saying the tone for i think i think only <laughs> one figures. person has brought a tablet today i won't say who it is you can just <laughs> enjoy everyone's hey, me <laughs> I'm into this because this is very like etch a sketch. Yeah. 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 So, That's Salvador creepy. Dali chic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have this um kind of this uh this grove of trees. But um in in the middle is just this majestic tree. And what it it's lasted throughout the years and it's become a symbol of perseverance and excellence. This idea of being something that towers above everything else and lasts forever. I love that. And Ooh, it's so box. perfect that it's like right in the center. Uh, is anyone inspired to do their question next or should I call on someone in the classroom? Oh, oh I, I, I can do it. Uh, I, but I do want to say, you know, as a very tall person, I do really uh, enjoy the idea that towering over everything is a good thing in this land. <laughs> uh, so, so my question is: uh, cho choose one of the the following two, and I chose the one which was the most interesting to me, which uh, was: what do parents warn our children about at bedtime, and what celebration is tied to that fear? So I, I wrote, and I will, I will attempt to do something related to a stick figure that, that is relevant to this, but I wrote that uh, parents warn their children uh, to always sleep with their feet to their wall instead of their head, because there are monsters in this land that can climb down the wall and enter your dreams otherwise, uh, if your head is facing the wall. Big so I, I made up that... Uh, they have this yearly festival where everyone dresses up as bad dreams and scary things to show the monsters that they don't fear them and they're not worthy of inflicting nightmares upon. I, I really like Halloween. So oh my! It's not <laughs> Halloween. I'm excited so. to see your dreamy bed drawing. <laughs> I, hmm, I was gonna draw stick figures at the festival oh, okay. but i could do that too we that would just be like a creepy stick figure like crawling someone's gotta draw the first stick figure you draw okay. what you I'll like I'm I'm just... it. all right all right okay let's see if, uh, how this works all right 
Okay, and while Ren is drawing, do we want to start reading our third question then? I'll do yeah. third. Oh, yeah, Dave, go for it. You go? All right. So I wanted to pick name one group that is traditionally wealthy in our society. Name another who has supplanted them recently. So I love this idea of this giant tree and monsters being in the world. So I want to say in society, the rich people are the adventurers, the people that could actually make it as close as they can to the tree. The closer you are, the rarer the finds. So what's, what has supplanted them is these items have been here for eons. Can you find them? Can you get past monsters and things of that nature and bring them back to town for celebration? Did you find gold? Did you find something useful? So it's not the workers, it's the stronger individuals of society. That's awesome. Kayla. Yeah, I love that. So adventuring, uh, adventure, adventuring equals wealth. Mm -hmm. So is it, is it, okay, I have a question for you then. Mm -hmm. You said it was the strongest, but could it mm -hmm. also just be like the adventurous? Like it's whoever mm -hmm. is kind of willing to venture through if you find something amazing you know what if you find gold one day so maybe even archaeologists yeah. just anyone that's willing to traverse to get to this tree as close as they can to find something that's amazing love it excited to see what you're gonna draw and vince <laughs> right well my question is <clears throat> what is the price of magic who usually wields it? Now, of course, we know in this world, uh, magic is not performed with uh, ingredients, with arcane focuses or rituals necessarily. The only cost of magic is time, time drawn from the lives of others. And so over time, culture has come to accept the idea that some people just need to be a font for magic. Their entire purpose in life is to give the years they have to power the spells of powerful mages. And so, taken or volunteered as young men and women, they age at a pace much greater than your normal people because they offer their lives to fuel the magic of their fellows and thus retire even in their teens, but looking like people in their 80s, their 90s, withering away in a small retirement community called Kallon, which is where they're all taken care of until they eventually expire, having served their purpose and done their duty to the kingdom. I'm gonna draw that. That's amazing. I, <laughs> all of y'all, like y'all didn't come to, I mean, y'all came to play, but like, <laughs> this is so much, it's amazing. Did we figure out who has the tablet, by the way? Because Ren's drawing is really good. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I'm trying to draw this guy picking up gold. I'm like, <laughs> it's like three hands. It looks great. What are you talking about? Uh, Look at these lines. <laughs> this is so good. I don't know what you're talking about. This looks amazing. And this, right, I'm getting little, little old man. There we go. Amazing. Uh, if y'all want to keep drawing, you can keep drawing. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to open the starting X document and I'm going to read this out. So, um, so there are three acts, which we will tell our story. As I said, we're hoping to get through like one really good one and then into the second if we can. And then if we have to end on a cliffhanger, that's fine. We'll just leave them wanting more. It's good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> each has, each act has the same structure. It's a historian phase, four story rounds, which is four turns per round. And then the biographer phase, um, before you start, we will read these guarding principles out loud. I'm going to read them out to y'all. So literally, I love these. They're so good. This, this guy, like, ugh, just keep these in mind when you are telling your story and playing the game. Name places, not people. So we are going to refer to the hero as the hero. We will refer to all the companions and people by their archetype or their title. Uh, you can name places evocatively. So you can name places that are part name, part descriptor if you want. Um, truth is relative. So good. Events are interpreted through the lens of the teller. So each one of you is a person with biases. Point of reference and prejudices, making all of you an unreliable narrator. The unreliable, we were talking about this before, the unreliable narrator theme is so much fun. Uh, oh, the, fa yeah. the fact that there can be flaws in this story and that things can be 
you know, kind of like, oh, that's not what I heard. Like, I, that's so much fun. As in life. Yes, yes. Nothing is nothing is set in stone. Like, nothing, everything is in the eye of the storyteller, right? So. Mm -hmm. So, and the. Oh my God, Ren, look at this drawing. <laughs> This is unbelievable. Oh my god, I can't believe right, you, did the, you did the monster coming down to the bed. No nightmares. No. <laughs> love it. Nightmares not allowed. No nightmares here. <laughs> um, the final one is disagree by making up your own facts. Avoid trying to reach consensus. Use your roles to show off your different points of view. So oh, yeah. with that in mind, we will jump into historian phase um laura do you want to tell us a little bit about the historian phase i don't want to be like the only one talking and this is your game oh. so i want to hear your <laughs> absolutely absolutely so uh the historian phase so what we do for the historian phase is we take a one a single theme card and we're all going to share it and each one of us will take a turn describing some type of historical event that's relative to this theme. And uh, we each would draw our interpretation of that description on the map as we take our turn. Um, so uh, these are all uh, individual events. So it's not like they're building on each other. And e so this is the first act. So this, this isn't quite relevant, but in the second act and third act, you you don't use the companions or the the hero. This is these are things that are going on in the world independent of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just go in whatever order an idea comes to us. So um, I will pull up. Y'all decided on. I'm gonna pull this up for a stream to see. They picked this lovely heartfelt card, the Harbinger, <laughs> for the theme. Uh, so the theme was, you decided on the first one, right? Not the sweet second one, the first one. Definitely the first one. <laughs> uh, once the candles burned violet for a moment, revealing a hidden horror. Who, who has, who has a history? Who has something for that that they want to share? <laughs> <clears throat> and this is meant to illustrate an entire historical event. Right, not not simply the perspectives of a single person having seen a single thing, just an overall like event that took place in history. That's right. Wonderful. Uh, well then, uh, yeah, I can go. Um, so in in some years past, actually, and I'll I'll start marking on the map a little bit here. Uh, in years past, there was there was a small. Uh, a small village right down here, and I'll begin illustrating as I go. <clears throat> uh, for a long time, this village had actually engaged in, in the rites mentioned previously in the prologue. Their entire purpose was to harvest the, the years of, of various people for the purposes of, of bottling and containing and manufacturing this magical essence. Uh, it would power their homes, it would power their their towns, their lights, various sorts of technological implements they'd had access to, until one day, all of a sudden, with no apparent warning, all the flames, all of the, the lights, all the various implements they utilized burned with a violent, violet flame, enough to actually uh, consume, to burn out the fuses, the circuitry, the lights, to even catch fire to the home as a fire that spread through acres of territory and several uh, townships before it was finally quelled, after which that technology never functioned again. No matter how much they attempted to repair it, to utilize the, the, the talent of engineers to replace it, it simply would cease to function and never again uh, did it work. And I'll draw that little, uh, that little village down here. I love it. This, Sad this, house. You've really set this magic up like I'm scared of it. <laughs> World building. <laughs> Amazing. And that's mine. Who who has an idea for the for the I have, a, I have an idea, so a witness. So that was a few years ago to make yeah, sure. Yeah, that was three years, uh six months and twenty-one days. Okay. So <laughs> a 
for witness. Oh, you right? don't have to do the witness yet. Oh, so, uh, the witness, just a story? Yes, yeah, so we're just oh, doing okay. the historian and, phase. So everyone does one thing in the historian phase before we get into those roles. Um, so it's like any kind of like it doesn't need to be tied to a person or like a thing like it's any... like any historical event re related to the theme of the harbinger. Yeah. Okay. Well, after that event where all the technology went out, people have started to assume to say, hey, maybe it's because we had such a large town, such a large power scale. So what we need to do in society is we need to split instead of having one major city around with the tree next to the tree let's just make multiple small towns surrounding the tree because they didn't want that to ever happen again every so often maybe during some of the events they have they do turn violet but they've never shown as or they never turned as brightly as they did that day so we have smaller towns around the tree where people investigate and live hell yeah Nice. Just draw some little towns. <laughs> <laughs> little towns less on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? I, I'll go. I, I like to think that since this purple flame erupted and, you know, took away pieces of magic, the color purple has just been seen as bad luck ever since. So, so purple nobody grows purple vegetables anymore purple flowers just get dug up um if anybody is born with purple eyes which used to be seen as a sign of of good magical essence uh they, they wear glasses to cover their eye color or hire mages to you know do a bit of magic trickery and turn their eyes brown or something um any purple gemstones that used to be part of like family heirlooms would just get buried just no purple purple bad i'm i'm sad i'm sad purple's my favorite, <laughs> it's like color. My favorite color too it's a good, it's a good color <laughs> and i oh i drew the the explodey purple flame candle up on the top oh. look at this drawing <laughs> jesus <laughs> <laughs> We're in the freaking Louvre over here. I, I've used this tablet once. Ever. <laughs> Mine looks like a, a a burning brownie down here. It's oh delicious. boy! Right, right. Um, so a long time ago, there was a, a another kingdom. And right before uh, the, um, the heir would ascend to the throne, there would be a candlelit ceremony. But one year, the candles flickered purple for a moment. And after that, there's been a sense of discontent and uh, an intense focus on testing the, the air after years of unease and to this day before an heir could ascend to the throne in this small kingdom uh, they must pass through the flame that is, I just <laughs> that is awesome oh my goodness all right kick ass yeah that's so awesome honestly um such a rich world already i know i agree i like this <laughs> y'all so like this game is so cool because it's like it's a really cool game on its own but it's also like i feel like we're gonna get so invested in this world i'm gonna be like <laughs> but what but what happened <laughs> um all right so uh I'm pulling up the story round card to show to stream so you all can see uh, this. This layout is not only lovely, it's also um, it works very well for for how you play the game. So we literally have out on the table the roll cards um, that anyone can look into and uh, remember kind of what they have to do for their round. They're even labeled one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I almost said five four <laughs> i can count um <laughs> and uh down below here we have a spot where we had the theme card and uh there will be um other themes 
through the game. This was just our first one. Over here are the companion cards. So these are the cards uh, that the players will use to pick and decide uh, who a companion was to the hero of this story. Because this whole story, there is a hero of this adventure, but we're not them. <laughs> we're everyone else. Uh, that is the fun. The one card that we don't have to play, we won't lay out until until the moment when it is time to do it is there are lovely, lovely art cards that that companion card will go uh, here. I'm actually pinging it on the screen um, and that that is one we will pull when it is time uh, to actually describe them um, and meet them and everything like that. Uh, so the first the first we are going to go into our I mean, we already in our first act. We did our first act historian phase. Uh, we'll now move on to the rounds, uh, starting with the cartographer. So, Laura. Yes. Um, so as a cartographer, the first thing I do is I look over the map and I'm going to briefly just kind of recap the recent events from, um, from before. So that in this case, since we just did the prologue and a historian round, I'll just kind of quickly recap um so we are a we are a land with a massive tree in a that stands tall above the forest it's something that um it, we interpret as enduring like uh, excellence upwardness uh the rich people are people who adventure um the cost of magic is truly sucking your youth away um, and, uh, we celebrate a festival around not being afraid of things that, of monsters and things that are under the bed by dressing up like monsters. Um, other, other historical events that have happened recently, um, there's been an, um, uh, ominous, uh, inheritance in another kingdom where now they're very wary over their heirs. Um, there has been a schism with several towns coming up uh, after they saw a harbinger. Um, let's see. There was a great fire. And oh, there's one more. I'm missing it. Was it the purple mm. flame? Purple, purple Oh, right. Being, yeah. Everything purple is yeah, no good. Oh, not, not that type yeah. of no good, the other type of no good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, oh, and I should, as uh, as you may notice, the cartographer gives their own spin on how they've interpreted events. Okay. So I'll Beautiful. be drawing. I'm, I'm trying to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I've got. Correct me I've, if I've I'm got wrong. A whole the, thing going over here. The, the purple no flame here like it. sucked all the magic out, right, of a certain place. Uh, well, right the way that? that I described it, which is totally open to your interpretation, is after that purple flame of the Harbinger theme came up, it permanently destroyed all of the uh, sort of magically fueled technology of this area. Even after repair, it will not work any further. Awesome. Beautiful. So, Ren, you get to be our first companion. Oh, boy. So rather than the, um, we already have our four companion cards laid out for you to choose from. Uh, you also get to draw two theme cards and then pick one to define your story and discard the other. Um, and that is when after you've done those things, that is when you get to draw the beautiful face card. And we get and to a see. Question, a yeah. question about the cartographer as well, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. is it also their job to fill out the map and detail the map as the remaining roles also tell their pieces of the story, right? Yes, that's correct. Wonderful. So the, cartog uh, the cartographer winds up playing the entire round. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the cool, cartographer is put to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we should sorry. have all gotten <laughs> drawing pads for this shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. 
I just got a little like brain uh, distract overwhelm thing. You, what was the first step you told me to do again? Uh, draw a theme card. So over to the right, okay. uh, we have all those cards. So the first one is the face cards. The second one is the companion right. cards. And the third one down is theme. Uh, so you, draw sh one. you should be able to draw two out of that and then choose which one you want. And do you all see it when I draw it? It's a, uh, not if you put it into your hand. You could put them out into the table if you want. You can just like literally flip them down onto the table if you want. Okay. Where did it go? I did it. I hit draw. They're in your hand. I could literally see them. Do you want me to steal them from you? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> please help me. I'm not great at roll 20. It's, no, you're it's fine. It's a wonderful you're fine. You're program. Fine. I am terrible at it. It's fine. So you need to allow me to take these cards from you. I literally, uh, for anyone looking from my end, you can see it says I uh, I can pull up things from Red's hand and then I can request them. So now they're mine. Uh, I can pull them from my hand and ooh, these are exciting. You got corruption or renew. Wow, those are like direct opposites. It's one or the I other. Feel <laughs> like. Which which would you like? All right. Um. <laughs> These are awesome. And so those, that would form the theme of mm -hmm. Ren's companion. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Right. Wonderful. So it, would, it kind of, you know, it's a theme of how the companion and the hero's story will go, so. Sort of the circumstance. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Into it. All right, well, I'm gonna choose corruption. Let's do it. <laughs> there <were> so <laughs> I'm gonna take this. this one away from you now. You can go <laughs> ahead and dark. I'm gonna put corruption down here for you. Uh, which specifically, which part do you think would you like? It went away. Uh, oh, it's part. just it's right. It oh, there it is. right here. Yeah. Once a great blight afflicted the land. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> no happiness in this story. No, 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 no. It's okay. That's why you need a have hero. To do with That's purple. why you need a hero, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we just, we have enough <laughs> corruption of powerful leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not enough blights, though. So, so next, so I mean, you could actually, uh, if you want to, uh, Ren, if you want to look at your companion card and actually, why don't you read us out the first three points of it? Actually, we should read out this whole card if you don't mind, and then that way, since this is the first time we're kind of going around, we might as well like kind of cement yeah. the roles like a little bit. Introduce the role yeah, we play. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And then oh, after this, okay, we'll we'll know it. them a little better. Uh, the companion. Draw two theme cards and pick one to define your story. Discard the other one. Choose one of four companion cards you have available to you. Uh, draw a face card from the top of the stack. With these three elements, tell a story about this companion and how they interacted with the hero. All right. Um, the companion cards, they are the mm -hmm. the bottom four that have been selected. Yeah, those four on the mm -hmm. bottom. <clears throat> Something else to keep in mind is that when you're playing the companion, you want to tell the story from a pers first person perspective because you, for this round, you're that companion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm choosing like childhood that. friend. Nice. Aww. Awesome. I'm not always dark and gloomy. <laughs> <laughs> and then a face character from the top of the stack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want me to pull it out for you? That'd be wonderful. Justin. Okay. So. Um, well, this is. Ooh. This art is so good. Y'all, like, honestly. Check you out. I love this. <laughs> so that's what the childhood friend looks like. Mm hmm. Okay. Great. Very dashing. I agree. I'm, I'm into that. I'm also I, curious. Yeah. <gasps> They're surrounded by purple. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like... it's great. Oh, that's right. That's great. Yes. Those grapes are banned. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> we don't have grapes. We eat cherries. Oh, no. He's hot. <laughs> oh, no. He's hot. Like, oh, no. He's hot. <laughs> All right. All right, then. Hot grape surrounded childhood friend. Corruption. Corruption. All right. Yeah. Uh, grapes. <laughs> Let me get back just real quick to the instruction because it says I have to tell it from first person. Mm -hmm. 
And it mm -hmm. says at the end of the round, pass the card to the left to the witness. Okay. Yeah. So, once we've yeah, done we everyone, we'll uh, shuffle all the cards down one, basically. All right. <clears throat> Our first companion. And we don't name them. Right. No. All right. All right. Yeah. They are Their the, title childhood would be the childhood friend. friend right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. The archetype. Exactly. That makes sense. That's, that's how everyone knows them, you know? Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Everyone gather around, gather around. I am going to tell you a story about the hero before. They were the hero that you all know. Because I, I am the one who had their ear first. Before the calamity, before the abominable. Ab ab <laughs> Big words you can actually say, Ren. A -ba -ba. <laughs> For the abolishment of Violet. Because we grew up in a very small town known for growing grapes. They were the child of the head of the vineyard and I, just a lowly grape plucker. But they saw something in me. And when they got the call to adventure, when all the grapes started to wither on the vine. They, they took my hand and said, you, you're not meant for this life as much as I'm not meant for this life. We're going to go, we're going to go solve this because I need someone to write the story down. So please come with me. And that is how I knew the great hero. Oh, it's getting another all round. torn up. <laughs> what happened? Yes, yes, another round, another round, please. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, so if you notice over to the left of the screen, there are uh, a bunch of places that say face card and companion. So as we play, we will leave these out visible so we will remember who is who by putting them um over there so i'm literally gonna take i guess we can leave it for now once the round is done we will put them um over over there and then by the end of our first act we'll have four companions uh situated over on that the left side of our of our play mat beautiful <laughs> does that mean the uh the, the witness comes next. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Next uh, is the witness. Uh, what's so, the verdict on grapes? I have an idea. What's the verdict, sure. <laughs> what's the verdict on grapes? Are they bad? We don't it's eat gonna those It's going to be real. No it's not great. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. All right. So the witness card, do you want to yeah. introduce that to a person? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to Do you wanna read it out? It's um oh, sure. like literally the one that's on the, the table. If you literally click on it and hit Zed, um, mm -hmm. just read out those those bullet points. Okay. So the Zed, witness. It's Zed, it's Zed, stop. <laughs> the <Canada> is showing. <laughs> All right. For the witness, look to a part of the map where the hero last companion is not. Take some previous event, perhaps from the historian round, to describe it how it goes forward. You don't need to tell the whole story, just share some facts. At the end of the round, pass this card the left to the lore keeper. All right. So. At the top left town, the smaller town compared to the others, there was a vine vineyard of grapes. And a child was just walking by and looking around. He stumbles upon purple light. He's like, are those grapes? Like, <laughs> we don't grow those here anymore. They've been removed. But he looks a bit closer and steps to it. And he sees a man. And he slowly looks at those grapes and says, wait a second. Those are lights. So these lit candles that are purple are lit and the guy is just putting his hand around them and he's just chanting himself, I no longer want to use my life for magic. My time is valuable. Can we harness this? And then all of a sudden those candles purple just float up just a little bit and they stop. Last again, I'll figure this out. And he hovers over one last time and they all light up around the multiple candles everywhere and the child runs away. So no one believed the child when he said this is what happened, but there's something going on in that town. <laughs> Harness the great oh, magic. Yeah. <laughs> I like what B Zelda said. Yes. Okay, but also, 
Can we see this is look, this is excellent stick figure art right here. <laughs> I <laughs> agree. That's perfect. <laughs> look at that. It's great magic. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> he just wants to bring back the grapes. <laughs> they taste it good. I love it. A surprisingly grape themed adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have guessed. Uh, yeah. Never have guessed. <laughs> It was in the picture. <laughs> oh, does that bring it over to me? Uh, so yeah, it's the lore keeper. Yep. Do you want to read us the lore keeper card? I will. So lore keeper fourth in a story round. Briefly describe a piece of lore that reflects some of the culture of the realm. Some examples could be song, poetry, mural, fable, theater, slang, myth, cultural movements, games, sports. At the end of the round, pass this card to the left. Well, we'll get to that all very shortly as well. <clears throat> Of course, I do have a story for you all. <clears throat> this is regarding the ballad of the Volstool. Now, uh, many, many years ago, you've all heard the song, I'm sure. It's, it's a top 40 hit <laughs> these days. Uh, but little, little is known about how it originated. And, well, it all began when the days grew shorter in number. It was found by charting the cycles of the moon and sun decades ago that one day had been lost in the calendar to time, simply disappeared. All of a sudden, the calendars are out of sync, and no one could figure out why until a band of mysterious fanatics referring to themselves as the Vostul sought out to reclaim the lost day. And then, of course, as you all remember from the song, well, that day came back with a vengeance many years later, and all of time and people and event that had become trapped in this gravity well of chronology all of a sudden spilled back into the world. Well, anyway, that's how the, that's how the legend goes. We're all a bit smarter than that, however. <laughs> Oh, Love amazing. Uh, amazing. That's so, 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 so good. Um, so what we're going to do for the cards, uh, everyone, you currently have your place, uh, the first spot, the second spot, the third spot, the fourth spot. If you would do me a favor and just literally write your first initial of your first name, uh, small, just next to your card. We'll keep track that way. And I will move everyone's cards to oh, what they yeah, are okay. playing next. Just to make sure. Where's the just card? Just like draw next to the card that I just did. Well, oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I like see. literally, like I'm going to ping. Like if you just put it like in kind of the space right next to it, you should still be able to uh, draw like a little letter. So like, Let's do a little you know, D an L, a, a D. Perfect. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Perfect. So. That's smart. So. Ren, Dave, Vince, okay. perfect. So I'm going to give cartographer is going down to Ren. <clears throat> Companion is going down to Dave. Witness is going down to Vince. And Lore Keeper goes up to Laura. That means Ren, you're going to get to go first this round. You're going to do our, uh, our cartographer summary and you get to be our artist this round. Um, I'm also going to take your face card away. I'm sorry, but I'm going to put it over here for safekeeping. And I'm going to take the childhood friend and we're going to draw a new card to put in that place. Let's see what we get. Outsider. Oh, so that is now an option for the companion. Um, and Ooh. Ren. <clears throat> Do you want to give us a cartographer's summary of the last of, of what has been happening in our story? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So what what I did notice uh, on this map uh, is that uh, there's a lot of discrepancies between the actual historical lore and and what's written down because I mean because uh, I don't know what that childhood friend was talking about, but I know from all the logs about the hero that the uh, the hero did not come from a vineyard, so I don't know what that, that childhood friend is talking about. But but apparently they're they're trying to pass themselves off as maybe some sort of 
you know, confidant of the hero, but I think that they might just be trying to capitalize on the fame, you know, now that the hero is, you know, what happened to them. Anyway, uh, so, so there's that account. But I, I do really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to edit that off the map just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, okay, so, um, just to get the rest of these details straight. Um, there was the very confusing story about the child with the grape magic. Uh, and, and that actually is corroborated from tales with the, um, uh, the early tales of the hero. Uh, because there, there was a sort of incident where there was potions made out of wine. So there is a little bit to do with, with grapes going on here, but they don't corroborate with the story with the childhood friend. Just, uh, so, so. We're gonna we're gonna keep that on the map, but I'm gonna probably move it a little uh, a little later on in the timeline. I think that was just a little little bit inaccurate, but but that's fine. It's fine. You know, everyone's trying real hard here. Um, and then, well, the the ballad of the 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 Vostule, that was actually really accurate, and that that really throws things off in my bookkeeping because the calendars were all wrong during that time, and so it took a really long long time and a lot of effort to get everything back in chronological order. It was a real real struggle. I don't think you understand how much it takes to date all these things and then and then change them and, and you know edit the right dates back on. Anyway, uh, so there was you know this kind of like time implosion thing and well yeah I mean I've done my best to get the calendars back the way that they're supposed to be but you know. <laughs> Thank you for that delightful <laughs> story. <laughs> I'm here for it. Oh, beautiful. That was so, so heckin' good. Um, so, Dave, you are the companion, and rather than rather than have you have to fiddle with the cards, I will pull out two theme cards for you. I'm going to lay them right above our current card, and you can pick which one you like, okay? All right, sounds good. Oh, why did I just draw on that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the wrong thing. Hang on. Yeah, just me. Just, uh, it's fine. It's, let me just, just... No, I don't want to... Is that the right thing? Yeah. You know what? It's fine. You know what? I think that, that town has a line there. through it now. <laughs> I'll fix it after, I promise. Okay. We'll fix it in post. You, you got uh, Oath or Hunger to choose from. Hmm. And these appeal to these, um, go directly to the companion. Mm hmm. This will be the theme. Hmm. Let me see. Once old oath, strong as blood, would discard it. Okay, I'll do Oath. All right. So I will get rid of Hunger for you. We can put Oath down here as it's now the new theme. Um, you can pick from the four options there for what you would like for I'll your companion. Rescued. All right. Ooh. And we will now see All right, your favorite. Whoa! Perfect. Oh, oh, perfect. Damn. Perfect. Oh, no. Uh, he's not. Yes. I love it. Ah, oh, man. All right. So how old I do next, just to make sure. Tell the first person account mm -hmm. of yeah. experience of the hero. Yeah. Uh, all right. Using the theme card as part of your... Uh, and um, this is the story. rescue. All right. Sounds fun. Hmm. All right. I'll tell you a story about the hero. Because I am known as the rescued. I am a part, or I used to be a part for the matter, of the Vastul. <laughs> People really think they're gone, but <laughs> there's a modern day, there's a modern day version of it. You wouldn't find it. Most of us are near the top left of the map of this city, and we still practice the magic. But you only can find it in the whispers. But to my relation with the hero, I grew up a Vastul. I lived Vastul. I breathed it. There was nothing else. There's no other purpose. Grapes are great. <laughs> but to our purpose, the hero ran into me and he was just so kind. And, you know, I didn't even know he was a hero at Honest. He, he showed me the world, showed me a life outside of the Vosh. And ultimately, I tagged along with him on this journey to look more into the Vosh duels and why. And can we really reclaim our time? And that's how I met him. Never go to the vineyards. Never go to the vineyards. <laughs> Never go to the vineyards. Grace, I love no. Reclaiming your time. <laughs> oh my god! What a tie-in! What a tie-in! <laughs> what a time. That was so good. I love that art. Yeah. Laura, is all the art done by the same person? 
It is. I, I got to work with a talented, super talented, wonderful artist named Daphne Hutchinson. She and I worked together for about two years. Uh, and it, it's it's been incredible. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Like, it, it, it was really incredible. Like, we, we were able to really just have an incredible working relationship and... Um, and just builds uh, campaigns that we, we really felt good about at the end of the day. I mean, we've only seen two, but they've been very good. <laughs> uh, all right. It's the time <clears throat> for The Witness. The Witness. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, we all heard about that uh, ceremony <laughs> where the, the new monarchs have to walk through the fire, right? Uh, it, funny story about that. I actually attended one not too long ago. Maybe you've heard about this, but this queen, oh, uh, what was her name? Uh, uh, Jireen, I believe it was. She was undergoing this ritual, right, to uh, to uh, pass through the fire and take over the, the, the whole realm. And all of a sudden, walks right on through that and just disappears. Not even in a poof of smoke or nothing, just is gone the next moment. They started calling her the absent queen taken in flame. Honestly, a bit of a cooler title than she had before. I think it was my, mighty well worth it, provided she's alive. Hope nothing happened to her. Maybe we'll see her again one day. Anyway, I've got to plow this field. Grapes aren't going to grow themselves, you know? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, wait, 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 though. I have a... <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> we kept talking about... Okay. Purple is like... It's not outlawed, but it's like taboo, right? Oh, these are green grapes over here. We only do grains here. <laughs> Like, are you are you evil? Are, are you green, purple, or green? I was literally gonna say, do we have like a, every color of grape except purple now? Um, oh my god, I love oh it! Oh boy, white wine only here. Chardonnay or nothing. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. Oh. <laughs> so good thank you oh this and art. witnessed oh my god it's amazing <sighs> that was so good uh, thank you for that witness uh, lore yeah. keeper all right witness um me. so there's a children's game where they usually on um, the darkest night like as a, you approach the darkest night of the year children will um they'll play this game where they'll choose one child to be um to be the purple one and they will secretly choose this child and they will shun them until the end of the darkest day of the year and until that day, the other the, the the child that's been chosen tries to bribe them with treats. So anything but a grape, but with candies and other fruits, toys, trinkets. But yeah, from basically uh, the. Equinox to the darkest day of the year. This happens. Is, you see, it drops beautiful. off by the time they're teens. Is it literally called like the darkest day? Is that the name of the? Is that what they call it? Um, they might call it. Maybe a day of shadows. Mm. Kind of like how the tree casts a deep and long shadow amazing look at this map i know i love it <laughs> i literally was like i wonder what that chair is and i saw the crowd and i was like the absent queen <laughs> <laughs> it's so good <laughs> um all right and then and you said like children do this and mm. they usually like like we're too now we're too old to play that game. That's a baby game, like <laughs> pretty much. Oh, oh no, I I don't do that. I don't play that anymore. No, no. 
Amazing. You don't want to get purpled. It's the last thing you want. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine making it throughout with never getting purpled. <gasps> A rare breed. <laughs> uh, amazing. Oh my god. All right. <laughs> All our cards are gonna jump down one. That means that Dave, you will get to be our next cartographer. Vince, you will get to be the next companion. <gasps> Laura, you will get to be the next witness. <gasps> and then Ren, you will get to be the next lore keeper. I'm also gonna take away. It was the, it was the rescued, right? Uh, Yes, that was the one that Dave did. Dave, yeah, mm -hmm. you did the, the rescued. I'm going to put yep. that over here along with this awesome, awesome art where we are starting to make our little collection of companions. And then we will draw one new one to go in that spot. So we currently have the ally, the patron, the outsider. Our new one is, oh, wow, the monster. Yeah, that one's a special one. I, I I don't mind like highlighting it. Um it's in a way it's a special card. So you were human once. Uh now people call you a monster. Turn your face card over. Interesting. So mechanically all, all that means is you don't show the face card or how does that work? Um so what you do is uh your face card for the other players could be completely hidden. Uh, so you uh, you could flip the card on the back in roll twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, some people choose to look at it before they flip it over. Some people don't. Well, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, so, Dave, you are a cartographer, which means you get to do lots of glorious art this round, and you also get to give us a, a summary. Uh, what's what someone thinks has happened recently? It happens recently on the map. Yeah. All right. So, rumor has it that a specific town. All right. Let's bring it back. So, our town that disappeared three years ago, it used to be near the top right. We'll say the northeast. That's where it previous was. But since then, we moved away from there. That town, that area, must be cursed. But I heard a rumor that another town has sprung up out of the blue and it just has this ongoing purple flame every time that the day of shadows occurs people don't go there we're too afraid but people claim to see on the say on the day of shadows that it just appears and it's just this ongoing purple flame there surrounded by trees and a vineyard of grapes <laughs> they're in abundance there outside of the town we don't know too much about it, but I would stay around there, especially on the Day of Shadows. And I get to draw. I get to use the great color of purple. <laughs> color purple, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Beautiful. Companion? Uh, yes. So I'm going to be <clears throat> I'm gonna be choosing a theme. Mm -hmm. uh, is that correct? Yeah. Right here. Right here. So I'm going to draw two of the theme cards right now. Yep. Boom. And can I, can I move those to the table as well? Yeah, you should be able to. Okay. Bam. Yep. And bam. We have either... Crap. Uh, <laughs> See, it happened to you too. I did the thing. I did the thing. <laughs> we have courage and we have boop, patience with that nice little <laughs> line through it. Uh, let's see here. Once knowledge is revealed after a great wait, ooh, or courage. Once a fearsome foe threatened the weak, or once a brave soul was threatened and isolated. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna go with uh, courage for that. I'll move that to the top of the deck right here. Yep. Oh, interesting. Threatened the weak, or once a brave soul was threatened and isolated. Um, I'll go with the top one. Once a fearsome foe threatened the weak and. I will be taking the monster archetype. <laughs> and so then do we reveal the face card or how do y'all want to do that? Reveal it, then flip it. Cause I do really want to see the art. I really want to <laughs> see the art. I, I always look. <laughs> 
Okay. Let's take a peek. Let's take Let's, a peek yeah. of how I used to appear. <laughs> yeah, so you should be able to just throw it out on the table and then uh, right click, okay. flip Roll. card over to hide it uh, again. Face card. Just the one this time, thank you. Uh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! <gasps> oh. How oh, interesting. Uh, what, what a... What a nice looking person. What a shame. Well, <laughs> well, too bad. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then how do I, I can flip it, right? Yeah. If you right click, there you go. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> they told me it was just a game. They called me purple. But little did they know that words have power. It started with a feeling, and soon, bit by bit, the voices, the sensations, and my humanity stripped away. And then came the hero accused of terrible acts of which I had no memory or knowledge. They say I threatened the weak, terrorized the downtrodden, and then they came to finish me. Ah, but <laughs> they were not quite clever enough, for I escaped and as I hear it, the hero haunts me still. <laughs> Amazing. The moment I heard that game, that that uh, bit about the children's game, I'm like, "Yep, using that." Ah! <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, amazing. <sighs> <laughs> Ew, the voices are fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Laura, you are our witness. Yes. Um, elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> There's in the in the village with the aging magic users. It, it seems that there's fewer people arriving to enter the village. The population is dwindling. And they're not sure why. There should be a stay stream. But there's not. And that's curious. Curious. <laughs> oh, somebody jumps on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Honestly, some of my favorite parts of this game, I think, just like to interject real quick yeah, there, please. is the fact that there's no real onus on any of us to tell a remotely complete story. Because yes. we know that we can just drop like a tiny, like that right there, a tiny little nugget of something with no idea of where it could go or what it might mean for someone else to jump on and say, oh, but then, and it could turn into a whole thing. I think that's so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you like it. I, yeah. it it's one of It's great. It, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. For anyone that doesn't know, this game won uh, Breakout Game of the Year last year. Just, oh, just, deservedly so. Just so you yes. know, it's really awesome. <laughs> and I'm going to do a quick uh, a quick uh, pause for anyone. If you are looking at my screen right now on screen, uh, we are playing through uh, the game. And as I said, it has these handy dandy pieces. But I have completely hidden the variant rule books. Look, look at how many additional types of like play and story and like there are pieces here that encourage you to play as a duet as for two people um there are larger group games there are group games with different kinds of stories of magic of fallen companions of myth and legend it's it, there's so this game 
this game. I was game. shocked <laughs> at like how much flexibility there was in the system and how many additional, like you were saying, the, the modules, the variants, just to uh, change the way that you can play this. This is one of those games, really anything with like a storytelling mechanic as its primary focus is like infinitely replayable because the system is so open-ended that it is a completely different game each time you play it. And I love that so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, just drowning Laura in praise. Yes, this is great. I'm just trying to fluster you. <laughs> we'll move on to give Laura a break. <laughs> Um, Ren, do you wanna do you wanna give us our lore keeper? Yes, yes. <laughs> All you nerds are just nerding about something over here, but I'm gonna tell you about the best thing that's ever hit our world. And yes, I'm talking about Grape Smash. Grape Smash was the best sport <laughs> ever. And if you're thinking about rooting for that really terrible team, the Lemon Warblers, I will give you another thing because the Orange Fangs are taking the gold this year. I swear it, they're taking the gold. Oh Go yellow God. fangs! I mean orange fangs! <laughs> Grape smash! Grape smash! I'm in warbler's rule! <laughs> Did that to my face! <laughs> oh, oh, I would if this wasn't on Zoom! <laughs> uh... Dave, are you oh, gonna give us a, uh, a good a good sports sports? The, I love like the, the fantasy uh, Hulk Hogan <laughs> so sports. <laughs> drawing. The sports. Let's see. Like, let's see. Sports in there. And I How was does like, yeah. the mellow apples rest the case? You all can argue. We'll be the here. mellow apples. <laughs> the mellow apples. We we'll just we we'll just keep going. We'll, we'll see you in the finals. Oh my uh, god! Oh my god! As if the mellow apples will ever even make it to the playoffs. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We'll see you there. It's okay. I know we've gotten last every year, but this is our year. This is our year. <laughs> we practiced. Oh my oh god. My god. Ah. I'm I I have no idea how Grave Smash looks. <laughs> like Graves. Oh my god, I'm so excited. All right. This is our this is our last oh. round. Vince, you get yeah. to be our final Hold cartographer. Up. Chat, go ahead and drop your favorite fruit team yes. name there. I'm, I'm seeing like the, the rolling tangerine. The, I am a fan of the rolling tangerine. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's amazing. See, thank you. Support the underdogs, the mellow apples. The mellow apple underdogs. <laughs> oh my god, the rolling tangerines. Puffin oh, warblers. Amazing. And then what was what was it was orange fang? The orange fangs, okay. yeah. Here's some cherries. Let's that go. Was, the fearsome cherries. Here's some cherries. <laughs> yes. I really, really like uh Kumquat Supreme. <laughs> I'm quite <laughs> <surprised>. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's I know they're new. I know they're new to Grave Smash. I know they're kind Lava of dynamite. An unusual <laughs> fruit to bring to the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, what's happening? <laughs> Uh, that just completely just like derailed my brain. That was so much fun. <laughs> that was the best. Oh my god. Don't underestimate the Granny Smith Senior League Grape <laughs> Smash Granny Team! Smith Senior League. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I can't. I'm done. <laughs> I Holy love it. Crap. This is... We needed a moment of a slight move. <laughs> yeah. We're back into yeah, the we dark needed... famine, purple monstrosity. But, you know, magic is literally <laughs> life sucking your life away. But 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 don't forget don't don't forget grape smash. <laughs> grape smash. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Uh, oh. Uh, so <laughs> sorry, Vince. You're our final. <laughs> cartographer um, oh laura will be our final companion ren will be our final witness and dave will be our lore keeper so if you would like to start us off vince with uh, a <laughs> summation right well to summate what just uh uh two planks there and uh, we had grape smash this wrap up and uh oh boy that was a bash this year you know big surprise actually uh the mellow apples actually took eighth place that's an improvement of almost 23 places good for them good for them one day they'll make the semi-finals 
Uh, meanwhile, uh, apparently the population of that village where we stuff all the oldies has been going down lately. Uh, I suppose they're just not harvesting as much magic these days, but you know what? I'll leave that to wiser minds than my own. I just draw maps, right? Uh, uh, we, uh, we had, I believe, a... Uh, uh, a, a, a testimony from a, a companion of the hero, but this time less of a companion, almost more of a rival. Uh, sounded rather cross about it, if I do say. Um, learned a bit about, uh, let's see here, children's game. Oh, of course, yes. Well, throughout most of my childhood, I, of course, was the purpled one. <laughs> I'm sure you could tell. Uh, it did not leave any lasting effects. After all, I became a cartographer, a known, a very popular profession for popular people like me. Um, <clears throat> uh, but in the meantime, I'll just start drawing here and uh, connecting all these dots. And I believe we have some more stories yet to tell. Perfect. Amazing. Um, <laughs> I love this. This is so good. <laughs> this is really upping, like... I. I I don't think we did enough voices the last time I played this game. I have learned a lesson today. More voices. I literally, I can't turn that off. <laughs> it's just it's the default setting. So, so good. Uh, the rumbling rhubarbs. <laughs> I also saw, I also saw the, the banana, the banana ramblers. The banana ramblers. <laughs> I love it. I love oh, it. Oh boy. Amazing. All right. Um, Laura, would you yeah. like to pull your theme cards or would, like, yes. would you like me to put them on the table? Um, I could pull them. Okay. Okay. I've got love. Oh. And transition. Hmm. Ooh, two, two good potentials here. Um, let's see. Got outsider, patron, ally. Um, oh, I could draw back up to four. Let me just oh yeah, that. sorry. I apologize. I forgot oh, to. So now we have the rival, the ally, the patron, and the outsider. Oh, <sighs> oh it's, it's a lot of ways to Ooh, go. Um, yeah, look at that. Let's see, oh, I'll I'll read out loud so it. Everyone can hear why I have such a hard decision to make. Um, so, love. Once the rules of marriage had changed, or once a forbidden love was revealed. Uh, and then there's transition. Once the power behind the realm shifted, or once an established power was relinquished to an unlikely recipient. Mm. Both very, very juicy. Very juicy. Not unlike um, Grape Smash. Nothing's as juicy as Grape Smash. Nothing. Grape Smash is just three. <laughs> the winning team just doused in Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Nickelodeon. <laughs> with the goons. The goons of the grape <laughs> um, Yeah, I think... I think we could be a rival. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. And love or transition. Um. <laughs> Both very good for the rival, honestly. They you have are. literally the love yeah. the rivals to lovers or lovers to rivals or yeah. transition one. The transition. Somehow so good. Somehow Ren is not drawing anymore, and I'm still being actively put to shame as I try and cartographize this map. <laughs> um, yeah, stop using the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> that's what okay, that does not make me feel better. That makes me feel so much worse. <laughs> Don't worry, oh Vince. God. all freehand now. Like, feel great. Oh, um. God. All right, Rembrandt. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to have the rival involved in a love story. Ooh, okay. Ooh, I, I love yes. a good love story. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. 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 All right. And my face. Let's see what I look like. Okay. Here <gasps> I am. Gasp. Here's my face. 
Sore bleu. Ooh. Ooh. This yeah. is so like the art is so evocative. Like I this feel art something. Is wild. Yeah, like each one. I'm like the art alone tells such a story, and then adding the cards onto them. You no, know, like it reminds me almost like like Magic the Gathering cards with like a little bit for some reason of the style of like Atlantis, the animated film. Like if you merge <laughs> those two, like Steve Argyle. <laughs> and Atlantis into this fun, like, fantasy-esque, but, like, slightly stylized look. I love it so much. Yeah, it's so good. Um, glad to hear that. Uh, <laughs> decisions, decisions. Yeah. yeah. You know, the hero is not the only person who grew up in a vineyard. <laughs> not the only person who knows his way around a vineyard at all. And, you know, we've known each other for a while. And just honestly, when it comes down to doing things one way, He's always just a little bit ahead of me. Picking grapes, intervening in uh, crises, whatever. Always just hair ahead of me, one day ahead. I'm always a dollar short. Uh, except for in this one case, I cannot ahead. So, True confession, my eyes aren't brown. They're not brown. And the hero knows that. The hero knows that my eyes are not brown. Uh, and I trust the hero to not make an issue of it. But often when people have eyes that are not brown, they have issues getting married. I, uh, I was such a person who had an issue and I'll never let it go, I guess, or he'll never let it go, but he helped me. He helped me in this situation where, uh, it wasn't our hometown. Instead, we we're up North with those maniacs with their fire on everything. It's, it, 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 it it's upsetting. Um, and one aspect of going up there is you can quickly get married, but you have to you have to be by the flames, and flames reveal certain things like eyes not being brown. Uh, so we were we were in a bad situation, um, and the last person I wanted to help me is the hero, but he did. I will never forget how the hero just, at first it was supposed to be sweet talking and I would sneak in and do paperwork and you know everything would be done. Everything push comes to shove, we actually set things on fire. But at the end of the day, wedding bells rang. I I was wearing and I'm kind of indebted to the hero. I don't love it, but I'm pretty happy about the outcome. Yeah. What's, I love it. What's a little fire between rivals? <laughs> I'm trying so hard to draw a brown eye. Oh! <laughs> oh. I'm really trying. <laughs> Look, I'm not red. I never will be. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's outside the lines. Oh god. Okay. Oh jeez. Oh, it's Iris time, baby. You got this, I believe. Look, you got some you got some funny eyes, is all I can say. I think oh. they look very it's very pretty. Yeah. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Almond brown eye. It's beautiful. Totally mm -hmm. not totally not not a brown eye. 
And I that... definitely drew some fire up in the north of the map. That's what that is. That's fire, that it's is. It's not. It's very clearly fire. God. Listen. <laughs> this is so hard, the mouse. <laughs> that looks great, honestly. It's I, I went up there before you even described it, and I was like, hey, that's fire. So It's definitely fire. Hey, that's fire. That's fire. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> you did your job. <laughs> oh, mercy. <sighs> Ren, do you want... Do you want to <laughs> be a witness? Can I can I get a witness? Um, um hey hey mister. Um Okay, well, well I, I really don't want to get in trouble. Um but I mean, say hypothetically that maybe I was or was not near the castle or in the castle or maybe in the room when the queen was seen last. Um I'm not gonna get in trouble for this, right? You know, do I have like like witness protection? <laughs> um. Okay, fine. Well, okay. Well, my mom is is a candle snuffer in the castle, and you know that's a really important job because sometimes when the candles decide to spontaneously turn purple, and then you know the candle snuffer goes around and and snuffs it so that you know nobody's tainted by the magic. Um, but you know, so often because my mom's running around all the time. I get you just hang around the castle and you know spying's a really strong word for it but i really like to see what's going on you know so there's this one day that i was kind of you know hiding in the rafters when uh the queen was you know talking to all of her subjects <laughs> and it was really weird because something happened and and one, one of the one of the flames blew but it wasn't purple it was green and everyone just got really, really quiet. And somebody pointed to the queen and said, the Queen's eyes are purple. But then, then I saw the queen's advisor grabbed her by the hand and pulled her out of the room. And then everyone else went to sleep. I, I don't know why. I mean, it wasn't that late in the day. I don't think they were very tired. But I, I ran away because I was a little scared. But nobody saw the queen again after that. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but but I'm not I'm, I'm not in trouble, right? Yeehaw! <laughs> I'm here for it. So, so good. much fire! <laughs> fire, fire and grapes, yes. Fire. Juicy, yes. Fire and grapes. Fire and and grapes. Juice. It's oh, smash. that's the that's a new George Martin novel. <laughs> <laughs> up here for it. I, I was gonna say, uh, listen, up here in Canada, we have something called ice wine, but clearly in this oh, world, it's that fire wine. Nice. Like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ice wine is so stupid good. It's so good. Uh, Dave, you are our final lore keeper, lore keeper? of All this right. act. I got, I got some little prop glasses. Are y'all ready? I'm here for it. Are you ready? So, first off, I'm a scientist. Uh, go banana ramblers. I want them to win. I like to ramble. They like to ramble. We need them to win for me. So, back to my point. Orange fangs! Mm, not the ramblers. So, I've been studying the murals and the myths of the world, and I think I finally found a discovery. Let's think about it. Magic takes our time, but for whatever reason, three years ago, purple canceled that. So we thought maybe purple grapes, the color, maybe purple magic stops time. But I'm starting to think it's the opposite. The people from that town are not only vanishing, they may be doing the opposite of go losing their time, but gaining more time. So instead of aging from our natural magic, are they going back? Are they going back to the point of even before being born? Did the absent queen go absent? Not because she vanished, but because she went so far back that she didn't exist. Is that, I don't know. But maybe purple magic is just the reverse of our natural. And that's a dangerous ploy. Could, immort could immortality be created if you have a balance? I don't know. But it's worth looking further into. We'll figure it out one day. Ooh, yes. I'm just so glad yeah. somebody used the population dwindling <laughs> tidbit. 
Yeah, <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah. There wasn't enough with uh, <gasps> with life taking magic and the pur purple magic. Now we have possible time travel. What's but the world's a hard place, but we all can look forward to grape smash. Grape smash the best. Go banana ramblers. <laughs> How quickly you abandoned the mellow apples. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, they are doing too well. <laughs> we can't make a movie about them. They got, they got like eighth place out of like 53 teams it's, it's, in the it's, league. But they didn't make something. it to the semifinals. <laughs> Remember the apples. <laughs> oh, Hello, apples. Boy. Um, so I have drawn us back up to four cards. So now we have the Oracle card. So Oracle, Ally, Patron, and Outsider are our current options for the cards. If you go over to the left, you can see all of the wonderful, amazing companions we got from the first act. Um, and as the last part of this first act, we get to do the biographer phase. So for the biographer phase, uh, the biographer phase throws suspicion or praise upon the companions of the tale. So each player takes a turn. You get to choose a companion that was not yours. So any companion uh, that was controlled by another player. When playing the biographer, describe something unfortunate, amusing, or scandalous about another player's companion. You don't need to agree with that player's interpretation of the companion. Use third person when telling the story. Go strictly... Uh, uh, Going strictly in order is not necessary. You can go as ideas come to you, and then the phase ends once everyone has gone once, and that will be the end of our first act. Does anyone have any opinions about any of these companions? I'm gonna zoom in on them because they're all so cool, except for right, this one well, that we can't see. <laughs> all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. But you all heard the story about the rival, right? Well, actually, it had nothing to do with love. It was a marriage of convenience. The hero was in on it. And I don't care what they tell you. It was all a cover up. Nobody's eyes were not brown. They're just trying to add a mystical element to the whole thing. But I'm really, really quite certain that the hero was in on it for political gain. And I know that you think you're an expert in this field, but I studied it for a semester. So I'm going to give you a run by rundown of exactly why you're wrong about this. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I was almost expecting it to happen. <laughs> I'm just making terrible people in this world. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. Hang on. The rescued? I know something about the rescued, all right? Okay, so this guy comes along, right? Says that he, uh, he knows the knows this hero, okay? He's a member of the Volstool, right? All these baddies, these cultists who died out like a gajillion years ago, all right? He comes to me. And he says, hey, buddy, you know what? You'd be Volstool material, okay? So come on over. We're going to have a Volstool meeting at the old uh, Mason Lodge uh, down 49th. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I've got an afternoon free. I'll go over there and check it out. They're offering bagels. They got It's catered. It's all continental, but food's food. I'm not going to pass up a free lunch. So I head down there. They pull up this PowerPoint presentation. This shit's all about selling knives. It's nothing but a pyramid scheme. Is that really what the Volstool turned into? I said, you know what, chump, you can keep it. I got a grape smash to watch. I got that shit DVR'd. I'm gonna spend my afternoon with some people who care about me. My fellow Orange Fang fans. Go Orange Fang! <laughs> Woo! All right, I'm sorry. Let me tell you about the Volstool because I know about the Volstool. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually... <laughs> We were so serious for like a good chunk of this, and then it's all just like, screw it. But that's, that's the fun of the different rounds, right? Like each round is so like, it, it, it's so interesting. Everyone gets to play every role. Uh, everyone has to, everyone takes part in the in the biography and the historian phases, and it really like, you can do both. You can have those moments where all, we're all like, 
drama, and then and then you can have grape smash. Uh, Scar's right, thinking chat says we're getting bunny plane. Some things about the companion's <laughs> tail that I don't think. <laughs> oh yeah, because okay. actually, because actually, actually, well, technically, no. Nah. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, let me tell you, I truly, truly do not trust the childhood friend. He visits his hometown, and or they visit their hometown and say, yes, I'm here to support the Mellow Apples, where they're conveniently from, but who, who really supports them? So, <laughs> the childhood friend is very, very, very popular, and I decided to go visit, and I saw them. The childhood friend was talking with someone from the rumored Vostool. We know online they always say the Vostool isn't real. The Vostool is still here. The Vostool are selling you goods and they give you food there and try to get you to sell their products. But there's all different types. But the fact that he, that childhood friend was talking to the Vosh, I, I, I don't know if I support that. So I don't know. I, I would look more into that. But it's none of my business. But... I don't believe the metal apples. <laughs> you keep you keep having all these one liners that just kill me. I don't believe the mellow apples. What a mood. What a mood. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> right, we tell the who apple. really supports them. <laughs> That's clearly like everything else I can believe. That's a cover if I've ever heard one. Like... I need to investigate. <laughs> You support who? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you also said um, go online, and I really like the idea that whatever like network connecting thing they have here, they call it like going on the vine. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yes, go on the vine. Yes, it's all very vineyard-based technology. It's yeah. like, well, I heard through the grapevine that yeah. <laughs> my stool isn't real. <laughs> Now I am invested in this world. I am too. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, they brought, at least we brought Vine back. <laughs> in some sense. Oh my god. <laughs> so, you guys, you've heard the monster, right? Yeah. I've heard about the monster, obviously. <laughs> So, how do how do we know that the monster really? I mean, how do we know the monster is not just a mascot for one of like the purple fangs? We don't know that. We we don't. We've we've never seen. I have a chart. We have never seen the monster in the same place as the mascot for the purple fangs. Clearly, they're the same person. I mean, the mascot for the Purple Fangs has been purpled many times. The mascot for, well, not the mascot, the monster, <laughs> who's really the mascot for the Purple Fangs, has been purpled many times. It clearly overlaps. I'm, I'm just saying, it's not a conspiracy. It's just a fact that hasn't been proved yet. <sighs> now I can't stop picturing the monster as a purple Philly fanatic. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm just saying, just think about it. Just, you know, do your research. I <laughs> do your research. I'm going to put this on Vine. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag purple fangs. I watched a exist. great video on Vine Tube. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and maybe debate me. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right. Oh boy! Amazing. I I want to make a Canadian reference, Purple but gritty. none of y'all will get it. So. Aww. <laughs> no, I I was in grad school in Canada for a bit. Okay. Well, there is this children's show called Pokeroo. That's like a giant mascot character that literally would leave the room to do like kind of exactly what you're describing. Like like they were never in the room at the same time. Like. So I can't help but think of, I hope there's another Canadian watching this. Someone, someone, if you watch the YouTube later, please comment that you know Pokeroo. Canada represent. These other knows. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I don't think we have time to do a whole nother act, but I would love to start our act two, uh, because if we do a historian phase, everyone still gets to draw another thing on the map. We get to do, um, like if you have anything, like especially because like our minds are racing now with all these different ideas that we just had from that really amazing uh, biographer phase and everything yeah. we just did. I think we <laughs> have at least time for one more historian phase where everyone gets to, um, we will draw a theme card and then everyone gets to describe a historical event and draw something on the map. Okay. So Here we go. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why did <laughs> not you... sacrifice. Sacrifice. <laughs> Once blood paid for blood. I. Is Ooh. everyone okay with this theme card? Should I draw another one? I mean, I, I'm into it. It's up to all y'all. Yeah. I'm We've got all of this time magic and ominous stuff, and then we we get up to sports, yes. mansplaining, <laughs> and then dark sacrifice. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna end like this is the final moment, y'all. We are about to either tie up a bunch of loose strings or make a bunch of new strings to leave loose um, for our amazing world that we've created here. So, uh, what is something? What is something you fit, think fits into this world revolving around sacrifice? <clears throat> well, I heard once <laughs> of a um, a very humorous uh, situation uh, called, well, we've come to know it now as the blood drive gone wrong. And down in the south of, of the continent, uh, down here in... Uh, <clears throat> In uh, well, Welderia, Welderia, uh, there was a a great need uh, for blood. Uh, apparently, from the denizens of a nearby town to the west, and the town to the east oh, d held this great blood drive to uh, acquire all of the all, all of the blood they could to provide to those who were apparently ailing over across the way. They drew up gallons and gallons of blood to save these people's lives, and then arriving at the bridge between these two towns, the other township had brought gallons of blood on their side as well. And it turned out each town thought the other was in dire need of blood. And so they simply exchanged their blood and went on their way. And you could really say that day that blood paid for blood. I didn't want to go horror because I knew that so many other people would. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know that that really hilariously comedic time we all accidentally tried to help each other out and swapped blood? We all drew a few gallons of blood and then just traded. Because <laughs> blood is like Legos. It just, it can just go in anybody. It's all, it's just, it fits. Maybe <laughs> Legos isn't the right analogy there. <laughs> do not put Legos in people. Don't do that. Uh, also, I'm just going to go ahead and like, this is not medical advice. <laughs> 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 Not all, not, not, you know, there are, <laughs> anyway. Brought to you by our sponsor, WebMD. <laughs> <laughs> if all right me. now, I'm really tired of all of you youngsters just getting all of our history so wrong. I'm going to tell you something about blood. This goes way back, way back before the hero was even a tiny speck of thought the hero's parents mind now what you all don't understand now that you've all been raised in this land where purple's not allowed and everyone wastes perfectly good grapes smashing them in this foolish chaos game you're all doing we used to make healing potions out of the grapes and everyone lived long lives and they were very healthy When, when the purple happened and everyone outlawed the grapes, they didn't understand what they were doing was cutting our lifespans. My father, he, he should have had another good 50 years in him. 
don't think you all understand that your ridiculous superstitions about purple and and it, it, they're hurting people. We need to get over it. To get over it and grow the grapes again. Here. I have seeds. Seeds for purple grapes. You. I'm entrusting you. Go somewhere secret and plant them. Only you can bring the healing potions back to our world. Because I, I don't have much longer left to live. Now go. You are going to be the next hero. Woohoo! I needed the grapes all along. Just went full <laughs> Lorax, and I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've heard through the grapevine. It's it's quite a, it's a very similar to uh, purple it, similar to some type of thing called Reddit, but purple it, yes. That's the dark web. Um, I've heard that the blood drive actually was a cover up. Would you believe that rumor says that? You need three things for reincarnation. Blood, purple magic, and a willing host. I don't think people are vanishing. <laughs> I really don't. And let me tell you the rumor I heard. I've heard in the town to the south, there's a woman that looks just like the queen growing up right now. Do you think that the queen used the purple magic, blood left over from the blood drive that wasn't really used? And reincarnated into our present day and age. <laughs> That's the big rave right now because we look back on pictures of people from years ago looking just like people growing up today. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they don't post anything on purple and I don't necessarily believe it, but I don't think people's genes are that strong. But eh, that's what I've heard through the vine. So many new mysteries. <laughs> You chosen one that I just sent away. I forgot to tell you why that was relevant. The potion was called the blood of the grapes. Now I'm done for. Blood <laughs> <laughs> of the grapes. <laughs> I'm gonna post this on. I'm gonna post this on purple. Yes. <laughs> relevant. <laughs> so, some of our oldest uh, adventure chronicles from when they used to go deep, deep into the forest. But very few adventures would come out. There was an account. An account of trees that were covered in a dark purple fluid. Thicker than wine. And a, a berry would grow from the tops of those trees. One of the uh, adventurers brought back that that berry, like like it smelled irresistible, and planted it uh, in in their home village, and a. Uh, uh, there was something that sprouted, but before the um, before that adventurer could harvest, each and every one of those fruits were found broken, smashed open, at around the base of that tree, and a long trail heading back towards the forest was found. The accounts from the heroes trail off from there. There were not many other successful retrievals, but whatever was in the forest clearly had a different use rather than the delicious scented berries. It still is a mystery. Woohoo! And I love this. Yeah, and on that <laughs> note of amazing mystery, look at our look at this map, y'all. Look at this 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 story, this map that y'all have created in this game to get look at this world. I cannot believe 
the wonderful, amazing story that y'all just hey, built. Big thanks to our sponsor, Grape Smash, for today's episode. <laughs> Grape Smash 2021. I love it. Ah, <laughs> so that that was that was barely like that was just one act of of yeah. Companions Tale. There's so much more you can do, and like I said, this was this is just the base game. Uh, for anyone that you know enjoyed this, this game comes with so many variant rule books included. It's so heckin' good. This game is wonderful, but that is unfortunately all the time we have. So we're gonna take this moment to go back around. Uh, I'm gonna say a quick thank you to all of you for coming today, for hanging out, for playing this wonderful game and telling this amazing story, for bringing all your voices uh, to this world. It was and your artistic hands. <laughs> and, uh... Well. <laughs> I drew something. <laughs> uh, I, I attempted a great many things. Mm. It was very good. It was amazing. Um, so let's go back around. Please tell us uh, who you are, where we can find you, uh, what what cool stuff you're up to, um, and what your favorite gra grape smash team is. And we're gonna go backwards, <laughs> starting with Vince. Oh no! Please, <laughs> hi. My my name. <laughs> My name is Vince Casso. I'm an actor, writer, voice actor, and streamer, uh, and DM as well. You can find me on the tweets, instas, and on Twitch uh, <clears throat> at Vince Casso. And I DM the D&D show Failed Save at twitch.tv slash Pixel Circus every Friday. And you know what? I think Dave's won me over. I'm a Banana Rambler convert. Let's go. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Next up is Dave. Hey everybody, my name is Data Dave. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Data Dave and Data Dave TV and other platforms, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Um, I love live streaming. What I got going on right now is Super Mario World with voice attack. I'm trying to beat the whole game without using my hands. Just Ooh. left, jump, right. It's taking forever. We're on World 2. <laughs> world 2 right before the boss. It takes hours to be the stage, but once we do it, it's great. Other than that, I do voice act, home studio available. Let me know, growing in that space and field. And I just like streaming fun games. And speaking of teams, see, I love the Banana Ramblers, but I've been trashing on the Mellow Apples for so long. Now I got to support them again to be like, hey, I'm back. I hope hey, that sketch for this. The moment I jump on a team, you it. <laughs> I had to leave. I had to leave. It's like, I feel bad. I created them. <laughs> Only to be like, yeah, y'all aren't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh man amazing thank you so 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 heckin much next up is ren hey i'm ren uh few that was this? yeah hi you're all really cool um <laughs> i am usually on on twitch with people that are you know way more interesting than me so you should check them out instead probably uh over on my twitch channel make belief live where i work with a bunch of other awesome like larp nerds to talk about communi community building and stuff in that in that realm i also uh stream building gunpla robots if you like tiny robots um, I'm, anyway yeah that's, i that's just neat. nerded out over that i have a gunpla i never built <laughs> I'm gonna watch you do that. I'm, I have just one. It's that's my goal. This is what I'm currently. I will be there. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm here wow. for it. Uh, anyway, uh, in terms of Grape Smash, <laughs> not that many teams can handle a complete rebrand halfway through. But those orange fangs, they got a new name. Somebody else called them the Purple Fangs, and I'm here for it. So Purple Fangs forever. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're Fang fans for life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> blue in this light that's not fair actually it's <laughs> purple's band with a z <laughs> bang. oh that's so good <laughs> with a z anyway <laughs> oh, sorry. No, with no, a no, z no. just because i was called we out on my speak Zen. canada here ren <laughs> hey like i said i'm from maine it's like south canada <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute that doesn't track never mind <laughs> <laughs> and Laura, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you so much for this amazing game that you have shared with us. Uh, for anyone that, if I haven't said it enough, it is available on Roll20. You can pick this up and play it, you know, at a safe distance with your friends. And then, you know, when this great panini is over, get the physical copy. It's real pretty. Like, honestly, <laughs> it's yes. so Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. Um, please uh, play the game virtually, Roll20. Um, also, uh, you can pick it up at Indie Press Revolution in a physical copy. Um, uh, so I'm a game designer, also a UX designer by day. And you know, uh, when I'm not designing uh, these types of role playing games, I'm designing like uh, nano games, LARPs, etc. cetera. <laughs> um, but this was such a pleasure. I'm so glad uh, I was able to play with you all and yes. everyone got to see the pain stamp. Laura, this game was, at, was unbelievable. It's such an amazing game. This was so much fun. Thank you. I love this. This was Thank literally so when, when B and I got to take over the show, Indie Showcase. This is one of the first games that I was like, I call companions! <laughs> I want it! I'm doing it! <laughs> it's so good. Thank you all so much for coming on. Thank, Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. The story yes. is... Thank you. I, Thank I you. honestly want more of this. This grape-centric world <laughs> <laughs> it has been so, so good. Uh, if you want to find me, my name is Jess. Uh, you can find me at go underscore JG and pretty much all the places online. I'm here every other Tuesday along with the wonderful, amazing uh, B Zelda, where we love to highlight and showcase indie games uh, in the TTRPG space. Um, you can also find me over on my personal channel where I stream all sorts of video games and sometimes TTRPG content because I'm a nerd. Um, I, I, I have some minor games. If you want to check them out at itch.io, they're not as cool as this one, but you know, it's still... Uh, they're they're playable on roll 20 card game card prompt games all the way heck yeah and um i just i i obviously have to cheer on one last time come quad supreme, best come team quad in supreme. The <laughs> you know oh, i forgot my team <laughs> who's your team mega manda mango <laughs> mega the mega mangoes are they I, mega this mangos. year I, is a building year i think we could go all the way <laughs> I, I'm not here for a mega mango slander. Hey, no, they had first pick in the draft. Like they're definitely looking up right now. Yeah. Yeah. They have the bad. upswing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So thank you all so much for being here. If you uh, watch this later over on YouTube, don't forget to comment down below and tell us your grape smash team uh, <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, hope to see you all soon for more games. Please take care of yourselves out there uh, and come back next week when, uh, well, just wait until after we leave because there's a nice hint, a little spoiler poster for you of next week's game and cast. So, mm -hmm. so thank you all so much. See you all soon. Goodbye. Peace. See ya. Smash. Rape smash. <laughs>